We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Bethany and Pilgrim Lutheran Parish on this holy night. We rejoice with heaven and earth over the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. The power of the Holy Spirit gathers us from wherever we are and brings us together in Christ. That is the mystery of God. We will now walk from the baptismal waters to the altar, carrying light, because that is what we celebrate this night, the light that has come into our dark world, and it is a light that cannot be overcome. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you made this holy night shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that here on earth we may walk in the light of Jesus' presence and in the last day wake to the brightness of his glory through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. These are the readings for Christmas Eve, December 24th. The first comes from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verses 2 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord, thanks be to God. The psalm for today is Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless the name of the Lord. Proclaim God's salvation from day to day. Declare God's glory among the nations and God's wonders among all peoples. For great is the Lord and great to be praised, more to be feared than all gods. As for all the gods of the nations, they are but idols. But you, O Lord, have made the heavens. Majesty and magnificence are in your presence. Power and splendor are in your sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, you families of the peoples. Ascribe to the Lord honor and power. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due the holy name. Bring offerings and enter the courts of the Lord. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Tremble before the Lord all the earth. Tell it out among the nations. The Lord is king, the one who made the world so firm that it cannot be moved and will judge the peoples with equity. Let the heavens rejoice and let the earth be glad. Let the sea thunder and all that is in it. Let the field be joyful in all that is therein. Then shall all the trees of the wood shout for joy at your coming, O Lord. 
for you come to judge the earth. You will judge the world with righteousness and the peoples with your truth. The second reading today comes from the New Testament book of Titus, chapter 2, verses 11 through 14. The grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly, while we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of your great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, The shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words, and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Tonight, heaven and earth rejoice and sing over the birth of Jesus Christ, God incarnate. In all honesty, 
Our gospel says it all. The angel is the one who delivers the sermon for the night, saying, do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. What more good news do we need? This sermon given to us by the heavenly host has been given on this day for close to 2,000 years, and yet it is still as true for us today as it was back then. Do not be afraid. You may have noticed that a subtle theme our parish has been focusing on this year has been these four little words. One of the children's Christmas pageants last week was given that title because it showed a little girl listing all the things that make her scared while her grandma was tucking her into bed. Of course, at the top of her list was the COVID-19 virus. Her list included other things that cause all of us to be afraid, death of a loved one, uncertainty, lack of control. The pageant went on to demonstrate that because of Christ, we have nothing to be afraid of. Because Christ, the savior of the world, was born so that all may live. Traditionally, it is said that Christ was born at the darkest point of the night, signifying that all the world is in darkness without the light of God. Tomorrow, we will wake up with that giddy feeling known only on Christmas morning. And we will hear these words. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In him was life, and the life was the light of all people. This is the good news of great joy. This news is so great, so profound, that for 12 days and nights, we celebrate the birth of this child. In a little while, Christ will be the host of the great feast, and people will be able to come in, light a candle, pray, and head home nourished with the body and blood of Jesus Christ. For those who are not able to join, or those who are continuing to fast from Holy Communion, we are still gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit through the mysteries of God, which we cannot fathom. In short, dear friends, this means that in spite of this past year, this Christmas has not been canceled, nor has it been overlooked. We are indeed together this Christmas, along with all the saints who have gone on before us. That is the mystery and the grace of Holy Communion. We will explore tomorrow morning how the manger is the Christ child's bed and how from this feeding trough the world is fed with divine food, the body and blood of Christ. We, from it we are nourished in faith and by faith. It is faith that has led us through Lent and now through Advent. It is faith that has brought us through these scary months of COVID, darkness, sadness, and at times, the feeling of defeat. One could definitely say defeat if you were watching any of the football teams that one might like, <coughs> the Vikings. It is faith that assures that our parish 
will not only survive, but thrive and live up to its mission. It is faith that will carry us through to the resurrection, to Easter, to spring. And it is faith that causes us to rejoice despite the darkness. Now imagine with me, if you will, what this night would have looked like. What would it have smelled like, felt like, sound like? And yes, what would it have even tasted like? On this night, a young pregnant woman and her husband, both out of towners, of course, we would call them blue plates, have come to Bethlehem, the city of David, in order to register under the governor's new law. No one took pity on this couple. No one said, wow, you know, they look like uh, they could use a hand. Nobody offered Mary any of the services one naturally gives to pregnant women. Probably due to the influx of people coming in to register, everywhere was full, and the only place that was available was the lowest of low places. The animals stable. We are told Mary wrapped her child in swaddling clothes and laid him in a feeding trough. Think about that. This is God. This is the promised Messiah. The King of kings and all the world can offer him is this? Meanwhile, miles away, Shepherds were tending their flocks of sheep. They too were considered the lowest of the low in society, working the third shift when the world was able to sleep peacefully. Martin Luther wrote, the shepherds represent all the lowly ones who lead a poor, despised life on earth and live under the open sky, subject to God, They are ready to receive the gospel. Why weren't the chief priests and the elders in the temple given the angel's message? Why were these unlearned shepherds chosen to be entrusted with this holiest of gospels? This points us to the main gospel that God not only honors and loves those who are despised by people or who are in the depths, but what's more, God willingly enters into those places with us, willingly takes that grief upon himself for us. Humanity tries so hard to be self-righteous, blameless, perfect, seen high and lofty on a pedestal so that we are not found in our weakness, in our vulnerabilities. Yet, dear friends, it is clear that this is the only place God looks. This is clearly represented by the fact that God comes to the world not with thunder and lightning, riding on clouds in majesty, but rather he comes to us in a vulnerable, in a vulnerable baby. This child is given for humanity, given for you to learn the ways of God, to love one another as God has loved us, to have faith in the goodness of the Lord, and to rejoice always in the grace given to us. I pray that this Christmas season, we all take time at the manger to 
to adore the Christ child, to rejoice and give praise, and to ponder alongside Mary what all of this means. Thanks and praise to you, Almighty Father. Amen.
gathered together by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gathered with all who seek the Christ child, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Let your church throughout the world proclaim the good news that Jesus Christ is born. Unite the voices of all your faithful people in songs of praise and rejoicing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Heaven and nature sing joy to the world. Give respite to flocks, fields, and those who tend them. Come near to us in the beauty of nighttime, the shining of the stars, and the hush of a world at rest. May our wonder at your creation rouse our care for all the earth. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The angels sing, peace on earth. Come quickly to still the strife of this world. Hush the noise of war and violence in places of unrest. Inspire leaders of nations to seek lasting peace and sustainable provision for all in their care. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Mary sings melodies of comfort to her newborn child. Bring rest and reassurance to those facing struggles this night. Shelter travelers and those without homes. Console those who lie awake due to pain or anxiety. Heal those who are sick or hurting. We pray especially for Brianna Dahlberg, Ruth Ann Thiel, Alex Miller, Dean Christofferson, John Carlson Jr., Lona Nordgren, Myrna Leaf, Aiden Fazer, Bob Lee, Carol Juvie, Joan Anderson, Chuck O'Fallon, Charlene O'Connor, Charles Slater, Jim Formanak, Brenda Olson, Gwen Lundquist family, Jeannie Sunset and all those not mentioned who rely on you. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Love sings through the sound of a new baby's cry. Bless new parents and expectant parents. Comfort those who long for children, especially, especially those running out of hope or options. Surround families of every shape and size with your love and care. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavenly choir sings, Glory to God in the highest. We give you glory for all creation. We ask that you continue to help scientists and healthcare workers in ending this pandemic. We give you thanks for all the saints who have proclaimed your glory in word and deed. 
Let us join them this night in joyful praise around your eternal throne, especially all those who have passed away due to the coronavirus. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. Normally, we would take an offering at this time, but tonight, we will listen to Carol and Phil talk about a different kind of offering and about what we can give to Jesus. Let us pray. Good and loving God, we rejoice in the birth of Jesus, who came among the poor to bring the riches of your grace. As you have blessed us with your gifts, let them be blessing for others. With the trees of the field, with all earth and heaven, we shout for joy at the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
beholding our God made visible, we may be drawn to love the God whom we cannot see. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. beginning and the end, the giver of life. Blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son, Jesus, the word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awaken your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Holy Spirit. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Come and be fed by Christ, who is given for you. Amen. The sacrament waits for you, just as we would do if you were a shut-in or a person who was in the hospital. If you are not coming by tonight and you continue to fast from Holy Communion, we simply ask that you contact us if you would like to receive Holy Communion, and either myself or someone from the parish can arrange to deliver that communion to you. Let us pray. Radiant God, with our eyes we have seen your salvation, and in this meal we have feasted on your grace. May your word take flesh in us, that we may be your holy people, revealing your glory made known to us in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A gentle reminder that there are three ways to give to Bethany or Pilgrim, or both. The first is you can give the old-fashioned way by mailing or giving in person, by dropping off your giving to the secretaries in the office. The second is by signing up for through Simply Giving. This is through Thrive and Financial. We ask that you contact the secretaries. They have a form for you to fill out for this way of electronic giving. The third option is available on our website. If you go to bplutheran.com and on our donate page, you will find a make a donation button and it will say Bethany, but if you make a donation, There is a drop-down list, and you will see what it is. Just follow the instructions on that page. We hope you will join us in making a year-end gift to Bethany and Pilgrim so that our ministries can continue to touch lives and serve Christ. If you are in any way musical, we are looking for people to show off their talent. Please let me know if you are willing to help out with worship in any way. All children of the parish will be receiving little gifts. They are waiting for you in the drop-off boxes at whichever church you belong to. Please stop by when you are able to pick them up. Also, be sure to check out our Christmas page on the church website. Again, bplutheran.com. There you will find the Christmas pageants, a Christmas epiphany, children's book that I recorded, and other videos. Immediately after this worship, we will be opening the doors so that people can come in to partake in the sacrament, light a candle, and enjoy the beautiful sanctuary. Pilgrim will be open from 4 to 6 p.m. this evening. Tomorrow morning, We will have Christmas Day worship, and it will be available online by 10 a.m. Bethany's doors will be open for people to come in and do the same things. Just over there, the doors will be open from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Sunday morning, we will worship at 10.30 online. Gentle reminder that evening prayer services on Sunday and Wednesday evening at 6 via Zoom uh, have ended. That is except for January 6th, which is Epiphany Day. We will be having a worship service at 6 p.m. January 6th for Epiphany Day. The confirmation class will be joining us on that day, and that is the last of the 12 days of Christmas. So, if you are already tuckered out from the holidays, uh, remember it's a marathon, not a sprint. There are 12 days of festivities. So, enjoy. 
Receive God's blessing. May you be filled with the wonder of Mary, the obedience of Joseph, the joy of the angels, the eagerness of the shepherds, the determination of the magi, and the peace of the Christ child. Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Go in peace. Share the gift that is Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Church, enter to worship. Depart rejoicing. One, two, three, four. Oh, that.